Hello everyone, today my channel reached 400,000 subscribers and I would like to thank you all for all of your uh, warm and heartly congratulations, uh, but we are going to revisit that in my next video where we're going to be showing a nice tall game as it is customary on this channel. Uh, for this video, as promised, uh, I decided to show a, a very nice game played by Robert Chanta. Uh, it's the last game he ever played, for those of you who follow my other social media uh, might have seen that uh, unfortunately yesterday uh, the gentleman passed away uh, at the age of 44. So this is a game uh, from the Croatian League. Uh, he plays against Miroslav Horina. Uh, I would also like to uh, thank you, uh, thank Miroslav Horina for sending me this game as uh, the, the games played there are not uh, published online. So thank you very much for that. And it's a, it's a very nice line of, of the Berlin defense where White just um, creates, a, creates a nice attack seemingly out of nothing. Uh, and uh, well, you'll just uh, have to... Uh, have to see it to, to, to enjoy it. So without further ado, uh, Shanta has the white pieces and he opens with e4. Uh, we have e5 by black, knight to f3, knight to c6 and bishop to b5. Rui Lopez is on the board uh, and Horina replies with knight to f6. So the Berlin defense. Uh, d3, uh, we have d6 now, not the, the modern bishop to c5 that everyone plays these days, uh, but still a, a, a standard line. We have castles, bishop to e7 by Horina, h3, uh, hindering the development of the of the dark square bishop, uh, and also maybe pre preparing g4 in the future. Uh, we have castles by black, c3, making room for the bishop on c2, uh, a6, bishop a4, b5, and bishop to c2. Uh, we have rook to e8, a standard move in the Berlin, making room for the bishop to come on e8, and the rook uh, on f8, and the rook will now be controlling the e file, uh, supporting the e5 pawn if black ever decides to push d5. Uh, we have rook to e1 by white, uh, and here. It's a, a very standard position. A lot of players have reached this position in their games. Uh, for example, in 2012, uh, Vasily Ivanchuk had this position with the white pieces against uh, uh, Krishnan Sasikran, uh, where Sasikran played bishop to b7 and Ivanchuk won a very nice game. Also, uh, a known game is uh, Fedorchuk versus Ivan Sharic, where Ivan Sharic played d5. Uh, in 2013, that game ended in a draw, but here we have h6. It's not a new move in the position, but it's uh, one that is, uh, um, mm, uh, well, uh, rarely played. Uh, and here, after knight beat d2, the standard line, uh, well, the standard idea in the Rui Lopez, you want to go knight to f1, then maybe to e3 or g3, depending on what black plays. And it is, uh, as of this moment, as of move 11, that we have now a new game. Uh, bishop to f8. Uh, a standard move, just making room for the rook, uh, and now knight to f1. As planned, we have bishop to b7, and now that the bishop uh, is developed this way, the bishop is being carried, uh, the bishop no longer controls the king side here, uh, you could play something standard like a4, maybe a nice flank attack on the, on the queen side, uh, but here uh, Shanta decides to go for g4. He's preparing g5, uh, and he wants to start a kingside attack, even though he himself uh, castled kingside, or maybe uh, aside from that, just also taking a very nice control of the f5 square, knight is coming to g3 to f5, and if black wants to prevent that, he will have to further weaken the kingside by playing g6. Uh, we have d5, a nice principled response from Horina, as if you are attacked on the kingside, you should reply by, uh, by an attack in the center. Uh, queen to e2, uh, uh, adding another defender to d4 pawn and also getting the queen away from the d file. Uh, we have d captures, pawn captures and now queen to e7, black does the same, also he wants to get his other rook into the game, uh, and now knight to g3. The knight wants to come to f5, which is an uh, excellent outpost for the knight, this will be a monster knight, so of course Horina has to prevent it. He plays g6, uh, and now Shanta starts uh, the attack, we have g5. Uh, h captures on g5, we have bishop captures on g5, now nicely pinning the knight, and bishop to g7. Uh, defending the knight yet again, and also the queen is coming to e6, so uh, the knight will be able to move. Uh, we have h4, preparing h5, and now queen to e6. Now if the pawn is pushed to h5, the knight will be able to capture, uh, as it is no longer pinned. Uh, and here, knight to h2, uh, controlling the g4 square, but also... Uh, kind of allowing the queen to infiltrate via uh, queen to h3. Uh, so knight to h7, as the knight is no longer pinned, the bishop is now under attack. We have first bishop to b3, uh, attacking the queen, and if the queen moves away from the defense of the f7 pawn, queen to f3 is the idea, piling up on the f7 pawn. And maybe if the rook comes to d1, also the rook can get to d7, uh, if black doesn't counter the white rook along the d file. Uh, with queen to h3, 
Uh, and now comes queen to f3. Now the bishop and queen are piling up on the f7 pawn, and, uh, well, black has to decide what to do here. First, knight captures on g5, getting rid of one of the attackers while defending the f7 pawn from g5. Uh, we have h captures on g5, and now... <clears throat> Uh, now just knight to d8, uh, defending the f7 pawn, which is uh, which is a must. But on the other hand, uh, your rooks are no longer connected, and for the moment, the a8 rook is not not able to enter the game. So uh, Robi immediately takes advantage of this. He goes rook a to d1. Now preparing rook to d7, and now rook to e7, preventing rook to d7. Uh, but rook to, rook to e7, while it does prevent rook to d7, and also it adds another defender to the f7 pawn. Uh, there was also the idea of rook captures knight, so another defender of the f7 pawn is much needed, uh, but it doesn't work. Here white has an excellent tactic, uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds, uh, try to figure out what Robbie played here, as it is the only move that gives a white advantage. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. For those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are once again an excellent tactician. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, knight to f5, which is just a wonderful idea. Even though black tried to prevent knight from reaching the f5 square, uh, white, the white knight finds itself uh, on, a, on the very nice outpost. So here's the threat. Knight captures rook, that's one threat. Queen captures queen, that's the second threat. And how do you prevent both threats? If you move the rook, you lose the queen. If you play something like queen captures queen, uh, then the problem is first white captures the rook with check after the king moves, you will first grab another pawn with check, and then after, only after this is captured, knight captures here, and at the end of this very nice line, white is up the exchange and up a pawn, so an easily winning endgame for white. So what's the idea here? After knight to f5, what can black play? Uh, once again, now feel free to pause the video and try to find the only good response from black's perspective. Uh, also a very nice idea. Uh, maybe even pause the video, sure. For those of you who were able to do it, once again, uh, a top tactician, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, notice that the bishop is x-raying the queen over there, over the long diagonal, and if the <laughs> this pawn ever moves, the bishop can capture the queen. So the, the, the only move here is queen captures knight on f5. This is what Horina played, and it is by far the best move. Uh, we have e captures by Shanta, bishop captures queen now on f3, knight captures bishop, and now g captures on f5. And here just knight to h4, uh, black has a, a very nice uh, uh, pawn mass here, so you do want to do something about it. Now, black, uh, black can try to uh, defend the pawn, but it will cost him precious time. Here, f4 is played, not allowing white to capture, but just knight to f5, now attacking the bishop and the rook. So what do you do here? We have rook to e8, as there is no danger of capturing on f7 for the moment, uh, and now finally the rook is able to infiltrate via rook to d7. So what do you play here? It's a very, very tough position. You might think, okay, I'll give up the c5 pawn, the c7 pawn, maybe I'll go rook f8, uh, and now I, I'll be able to move my knight, uh, but it doesn't work here. Uh, white would have this very nice knight to e7 check, and now Whatever you go, king h8 or king h7, just a nice check, you force the king back, and now king g2, there is no good defense against rook to h1, this is just over, uh, white is completely winning here. So here, after rook to d7, black tried c5, he wants to play c4, uh, cut off the, uh, the, the attack from the uh, light square bishop towards the f7 pawn, uh, so first bishop to d5, not allowing c4 to close the bishop in, and also uh, not wasting time, as it does come with an attack against the rook. Uh, we have rook to b8 by black, and now g6, finally. Uh, so now uh, the pawn is pinned, attacked by the rook, and now you attack it again. Uh, black cannot add another defender uh, to the f7 pawn, or he can, but then he faces some other ideas. Uh, rook to f8 is played, adding another defender, but now just g captures on f7. You might think, but why not knight e7 again? Uh, it's a bit different now. If knight e7 now, uh, then king h8, and now if you go king to g2, uh, you are preparing rook to h1, of course, but black can go bishop h6. And although white is still winning here, uh, you can go king g7, make some room for the king, and it would perhaps take a bit more time. So, uh, Robbie goes for the quickest idea, g captures on f7 with check, uh, and now you could go king h7, only then will white go for this line, king g2 followed by rook to h1. So here, black tried capturing the pawn, we have knight, 
uh, captures on f7 uh, and now adding another attacker uh, towards the f7 knight as the knight is pinned just knight to d6 uh, and here there's a triple attack you are you're, you're not able to add any more uh, defenders to the f7 knight so here rook f to d8 is played with the idea that if rook captures then rook captures on d6 and although there are a lot of uh, ideas here you could go just capture rook and then win this guy or you could just uh, capture here with check immediately uh, but Robi goes for the for the nicest line we have rook captures allowing rook captures on d6 rook captures on d6 is played and now just rook to d7 check forcing a discovery and now black will either lose a whole rook or he has to give up the exchange uh, we have rook captures on d5 rook captures on d5 attacking the c5 pawn uh, and now just rook to c8 so here uh it's a uh, uh, black is up a pawn but white is up the exchange with a much better position uh so he starts bringing the king into the game this is something you always want to do in an end game king g2 the king wants to come up all the way uh, we have rook to c6 and now king to f3 uh, bishop to f6 and now rook e to d1 doubling up on the d file uh, rook to d6 is the idea with the attack against the bishop hoping to trade rooks and if the rook moves of course there's always the a6 pawn king to f7 defending now rook to d6 you can't really afford to trade rooks so rook to c8 is played and now Robi grab, grabs yet another pawn rook captures on a6 is played king to g6 and now king to e4 uh, king is coming over to the queen side to gobble up all of the pawns help out the rook we have b4 and here rook d to d6 uh, and it was in this position that Miroslav Horina resigned the game uh, why did he resign well there's really nothing more to do here your bishop is under attack you have to defend it after rook to f8 uh, white can play pretty much any move and it will be winning let's say a4 you just create a nice pass pawn captures captures and uh <clears throat> well black will be helpless to defend against this uh something like king g7 you, if you try to unpin white white can even go as far as just giving up the rooks for for the rook and bishop and push a4 and it will be completely winning uh we can even show it um as it's uh you know a, a no-brainer you can just push the pawn king d6 a6 king c6 you can just go a7 and after king b7 now you go king d5 you get rid of the pawns and that's about it captures captures e4 now king goes here if you push e3 captures black can try f3 but it doesn't work just king d3 stay in the side in inside of the square of the pawn uh and whatever black plays let's say king b7 e4 now you can go king c6 now comes king e3 king c5 you can capture the pawn and now here's the problem uh it's the standard end game where uh white the white pawns are separated one square apart and they are creating a wall against the black king so the black king can approach the c pawn but it doesn't matter uh, white's just going to ignore him and you will never be able to capture the pawn once you capture it you can no longer catch up to the past pawn so all, all, uh, also uh, an interesting uh, thing to consider it doesn't matter where the white king is the white king can be uh, after you capture the pawn it doesn't matter if it's on h1 uh, but it's important that the two pawns create a wall against the black king when they are one square apart so also we can learn something from this uh, but both uh, uh, Robi and, and Miroslav knew this so after rook d to d6 uh, Miroslav Horina resigned the game so yeah uh, a wonderful a wonderful game by Robert Chanta the last game he ever played uh, a few weeks ago in in the Croatian league uh, a very nice victory against the Berlin defense and against Miroslav who is who is a very strong player and once again I would like to thank him for sending me the the PGN the moves of the game as I don't think I would be able to to acquire them otherwise so yeah uh, really I mean it was a really sad day yesterday I didn't record any videos and um, I, I'm not all that surprised people died I, I'm not surprised by that but it's just a just a really uh, a huge loss for the world as he was a he was a wonderful person and really just a, a great guy all in all uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Prakar Maini, uh, Christopher Hasela, uh, Federico Samiter, uh, Ludovic Loron, and CC Biz Pro for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon with the celebratory tall game for, uh, you know, commemorating the, the 400,000 subscribers milestone, uh, where I will inform you about what, what happens next. Thank you all, and... I will see you soon.